Do me a favor for a second. Think of a player whose career just hasn't panned out. A player that for one reason or another, you think of them at times and think, damn, what could have been with that guy? He had way more to offer than he actually managed to. I don't know why, but Arda Turan is one of those players for me. I'm not Turkish, I'm Canadian with Portuguese parents, I support Benfica, not Galatasaray or Atletico, but for some reason, Turan pops up in my brain now and then, and I have no idea why. It's gotta be because of how he felt like the embodiment of Simeone's vision for a footballer. He was skillful and elegant, but he had a mean streak and an explosiveness to him where you always felt like he was playing on the edge. An explosiveness that, in the end, got him in trouble. When you look at the most expensive players to have come from Turkey, not even the great Hakan Sukar tops the list. Instead, it's a name that has been forgotten by many, Arda Turan, the player who arrived from Turkey and helped Simeone's Atletico conquer La Liga and the Europa League. From there, he secured a move to Barcelona to play under Luis Enrique, and everything began to fall apart. So what happened to Arda Turan? How did he go from a sought-after attacker to being paid to not even play football? Hey guys, I'm Adrian, and welcome to Rabona TV for anyone who's new here. In fact, if you are new, you should consider subscribing because we produce a ton of content. From lesser known football stories like how Osasuna are finding success in La Liga despite running their club the traditional way, that was actually a partnership with the club, it came out great, in my opinion, or our videos on the top derbies around the world, we recently covered the Soweto Derby, or explainer videos like this one. A subscription helps the channel, but no pressure, just consider it while you watch. All right, let's get into this video about Arda Turan. Arda Turan is an Istanbul boy through and through. Born in the Fatih district of Turkey's capital, he spent five years in the Galatasaray youth system before getting promoted to the first team. While he was always a well-regarded talent, he would have to cut his teeth on loan at Manisaspor in the second half of the 2005-06 season. But for the 2006-07 season, Turan was a mainstay for Galatasaray, as he would help them to qualify for the Champions League group stage and season upon season becoming a more efficient attack when it came to his end product. By the age of 21, he was already handed the Galatasaray captaincy as his maturity, coupled with his ability, made him a natural leader at the historic Turkish club. In all, he won the league and the cup once while with Galatasaray, while also making a name for himself at the international level. But even while at Galatasaray, dramatic events tended to follow him around, which would become a hallmark of his career. In a three-month span from November 2008 to January 2009, Turan had two life-threatening events occur. The first, he collapsed on the pitch during a match against Istanbul Besiktas and was rushed to the hospital. From there, he was diagnosed with cardiac arrhythmia, which was thought to be brought on by exhaustion. That can happen to anyone, right? And two months later, in January of 2009, Turan was in a car accident. Thankfully, he was fine, but as you can see from these photos, he wasn't completely unscathed. He had some cuts and bruises along the way, but was still able to train with his Galatasaray teammates almost immediately. I bring this up not as a, well, look at this guy, what a bad apple, huh, kind of way, but just to provide context, as trouble seems to follow Turan around. In August of 2011, despite spending much of the latter half of his final season with Galatasaray injured, remember those injuries, Arda Turan signed with Atletico Madrid to play under Gregorio Manzano for a few months, as Diego Simeone replaced Manzano in December of that same year, leading Turan and the rest of Atletico to conquer the Europa League. Turan was indispensable in his first season with Atletico, the 2011-12 season, in which he grabbed hold of the left wing position and never let go, even providing an assist in the Europa League final. Later that summer, he provided an assist in Atletico's 4-1 win over Chelsea in the UEFA Super Cup and helped Atletico to another trophy, the Copa del Rey, as Simeone's team was emerging as a top side in Europe, not just El Pupas or the Jinxed Ones as they had been known as previously. Well, not. Entirely, there were still some jinxes along the way. 
The 2013-14 season was another incredible triumph for Atletico and Turan, as the Turkish winger had his best output yet as far as goals and assists go, as Atletico rolled on to win their first La Liga title since 96, that famed 96 season where they won the Copa and the League. Where Atletico elevated themselves was by making the Champions League final, the first time they had done so since that cursed 1974 appearance. Unfortunately for Turan, while he helped secure their place in the final by scoring against Chelsea in a 3-1 win at Stamford Bridge, he would ultimately miss the final due to a groin injury. What could have been once again, eh? In his final season with Atletico, the 2014-15 season, he would once again put in some stunning performances, with one of the lowlights of that campaign being his red card in the Champions League quarterfinals. Playing away at the Santiago Bernabeu, the aggregate was still tied at zero. Then, in the 76th minute, a foul on Sergio Ramos got Turan his second yellow card and meant that Atleti would have to face the onslaught from Real Madrid with just 10 men. Ultimately, a driving run from Ronaldo down at Letty's left flank saw him cut inside and set up Chicharito for the winner, ending at Letty's run, and wondering how things could have gone with Turan on the pitch. However, Turan still had a demonstrably strong run of four seasons in La Liga, becoming known for his control on the ball, his unbelievable work rate under Simeone, and his creativity in the final third, enough to make Barcelona come calling. There's not just one band, but two bands that really derailed Arda Turan's career. One being his own doing, but the other, this Barcelona transfer ban? Of course, that wasn't on him. Barcelona were serving a transfer ban for infractions surrounding youth player signings. They still went ahead and were able to convince Atletico star winger Arda Turan to join them, however. I mean, it's understandable. Barcelona had just won the Champions League as Messi, Neymar, and Suarez, MSN, became the best attacking trio in the world. I mean, who wouldn't want to be part of that team? There are definitely questions to be asked of just how much playing time you would get with them in the side, just how Enrique would fit Turan into the team. But that was a question for another time, because despite signing in early July for 34 million euros, Turan would not be allowed to feature for Barcelona until January. When he was finally available, as mentioned, it was hard to find room for him with the likes of Messi, Neymar, and Suarez ahead of him. For that reason, Turan had limited minutes and often played centrally rather than on the wing, which was frustrating for him, I'm sure, playing just 1,170 minutes divided amongst 25 appearances. About 46 and a half minutes on average, which is understandable given he had a lengthy layoff and then needed to catch up to his teammates as far as match fitness goes. There were some that were beginning to doubt that he had the technical level to compete with Barca's other attackers, while others thought he looked a little bit slower than they remembered, which could have explained the move centrally. Now, there were some questions over his commitment, meaning Barca had to reel in the amount of trips Turan was taking to Istanbul, as well as monitoring his weight to ensure he was in peak fitness for his first proper season at the club. The challenge that Enrique laid out to Turan, the commitment he demanded, was bearing fruit in the early season. He got a goal and an assist against Betis, followed that up with an assist against Athletic, was integral to Barcelona's Supercopa win with two goals and an assist over two legs, and in December, he scored two hat-tricks, one against Hercules CF, okay, and one against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Champions League. In fact, that hat-trick made him the sixth player in Barca's history to score a Champions League hat-trick. But a string of injuries in early 2017 would lead to extended absences for Turan, a shame given the form he was finding, as he would only return in late April. Between injuries, he actually featured in the infamous remontada against PSG, just as a side note. But anyway, since Turan had two separate injuries that kept him out of all but two matches from early February to late April, and since Barcelona were in a title race with Real Madrid, Enrique didn't have time to worry about reintegrating Turan into the side. He had matches to win, and Turan would have to shift his focus to the next season, unfortunately. But... With Enrique leaving the club and Ernesto Valverde coming in, things changed completely. There are some who point to the preseason photos that emerged of Turan partying in Mykonos, looking less than match fit. I mean, he wouldn't be the first or the last player to show up to preseason training unfit, but that doesn't mean that it didn't help his case, you know? On top of this, Turan was 30 now had lost a step of his pace due to the injuries he had sustained, and was criticized for not putting in the hard yards for his side. In other words, he didn't look like the player that had made himself so popular for all of his good qualities in Spain. 
While Turan featured in a preseason friendly, he never featured for Barcelona again after that. While there were injuries that he picked up as well, somehow, I guess in training, those weren't the start of him falling out of favor. He fell out of favor, then he had injuries, and he was never seen again at Barcelona. Speaking about it later, Turan had this to say about Ernesto Valverde. Quote, Valverde made me feel slighted. He said he was going to play me, but he didn't. He said he was going to give me a chance, but he didn't. Everything was fine when Luis Enrique was there. We had won the league and the cup. Yes, sometimes things didn't go as planned in the Champions League. With Valverde, I felt insignificant and decided to leave. No one, including Valverde, has forced me out of Barcelona. I have made the decision to leave. He left Barcelona for Istanbul Basiksa here as a 30-year-old on loan in January of 2018 for the remainder of the 17-18 season, as well as an additional two seasons, leaving his Barcelona resume at 55 appearances, 15 goals, and 11 assists. Yes, they sent him on loan for the final two and a half years of his contract, essentially saying good luck to him. But his time with the club was over. In Turkey, while Besiktasir were chasing the league title, Arda Turan made the first of a hat trick of massive blunders while playing for the club. His first mistake. With three matches remaining, Besiktasir were playing at home against Sivaspor and ended up drawing 1 1 thanks to a last minute own goal that brought Sivaspor level. At the end of the match, Turan stormed over to the linesman, shouted at him, shoved him, and promptly got sent off. Now, Atleti supporters or La Liga enjoyers will know that this isn't the only time Turan released his volcanic fury on a linesman. While with Atleti playing against Barca, his boot came off when Dani Alves tackled him, and with no reaction from any officials, Turan threw his boot at the linesman and just missed him. For his exploits in Turkey, he was handed a ban. Not just any ban, however. A record-setting ban as Turan was banned for 16 matches for pushing the official. That meant that Turan was out until mid-October of 2018. Let's rewind for a second, as back in March of 2018, Turan got married with President Erdogan as the witness to the marriage, and later in October of 2018, Turan and his wife welcomed their baby son to the world. But. It was also during this time that Turan was serving his suspension and he went to a nightclub in October 2018 and got into a fight with Turkish pop star Berke Shaheen in which the pop star's nose was broken and he was sent to the hospital. The story doesn't end there though as Turan showed up to the hospital to allegedly beg for Shaheen's forgiveness and during some commotion, Turan fired a gun fired it at the floor in order to get everyone to listen to him. Y you can't do that, and it caused further panic, of course. One year later, in 2019, he was given a suspended sentence of two years and eight months of jail time, meaning if he committed another crime within the next five years, he would go to jail to serve his term. Shoving the referee, getting in a fight at the nightclub, and then showing up to the hospital with a gun, three incredible mistakes made by Turan all within the same year, all within the same six months, in fact. From there, Basek Shahir would indeed win the league, but his contributions were minimal. He would barely feature for the Istanbul outfit at all, thanks to injuries. And then, of course, in January of 2020, Turan's loan to Basek Shahir was cut short six months early, and he was back to Barca to see out the final six months of his contract. Turan didn't feature for Barca. La Liga would be suspended, of course, due to the pandemic, but he wouldn't have featured anyway. And so he was getting paid to just hang around. At this time, Turan still was determined to prove that he had something to offer. And when his boyhood club Galatasaray sent him an offer, he accepted the two-year deal with delight. And while he did feature prominently in his first season, in his final season with the club, he made just 12 appearances across all competitions, ending his career with one assist, and 297 minutes of playtime in his final season. Kind of a sad way to end your career, right? So what went wrong here? It feels like Turan just had a little too much time to hang around. First, there was the transfer to Barcelona, where he was banned from playing until January, despite signing in July. That's a lot of time to feel out of sync, to perhaps fall out of good habits. Then there were the injuries that rocked him in his first real season at Barcelona, which was a shame because while he was playing, he was playing fairly well and was integrating well with his teammates. Then there was the second multi-month layoff while at Barcelona, but this time 
simply down to Valverde not raiding him and not handing him a single minute of play. He goes to Turkey, he begins playing regularly again, only to get himself a 16 match ban. That was later cut down to 10 matches. But while he has that time off, once again, maybe he fell out of sync and into some bad habits, as that was when the nightclub brawl and hospital firearms escapades happened. All of these incidents add up and can make a player jaded. Not to mention the mental health aspects that come into play when almost every year from 2015 onward, you had a major layoff due to a transfer ban an injury or a string of injuries, a new manager not playing you, then a ban for shoving a ref, and clearly, you aren't in your right state of mind by the time October of 2018 comes around. The story of Arda Turan is a mix of misfortune, poor decisions off of the pitch, and injuries all colliding to make a sad cocktail. To tell the story of another player that could have been much, much more than he ended up offering to the world. But guys, when all is said, he still lived an incredible life thanks to football, and hopefully he is enjoying life far more with the privacy of retirement. I hope that you learned something in this video, and if you did, then mission accomplished for me. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll catch you later. Ciao!